the first indication or the sign uh, this, uh, that uh, allotransplant works in uh, Richter's were back in the year 2000. We have seen some patients uh, who have failed a lot of chemotherapy before, they have no other options, and then we did allotransplant. And we're surprised to see that many patients uh, have had long-term remissions since then. Uh, the, the, this has, was reproduced later on by other centers, uh, even larger number of our center. Why we do ALO? What does it ALO do to the uh, directors? The donor cells uh, generate a biological immune activity against the cancer cell. Uh, that immune activity is very potent. And uh, this will make a difference between a transplant and non-transplant. However, although that immune activity is potent, it's not quick. So it is not that you do the transplant today, tomorrow you'll be okay in remission. The, so the, the, those cells take time to generate the immune activity. So if we do a transplant in a situation where the disease is rapidly proliferating, progressive, uh, it's not un uncontrolled, the kinetic of the cancer cells can neutralize any potential benefit from the donor cells. So this is very, very important that we put a lid on the disease before doing a transplant. Now the transplant has evolved uh, quite a bit over the last two decades uh, because the patient with Richter's have median age 65, 70. And therefore, you like to adapt a transplant so that make it feasible for patients at that age and also to lessen the uh, complication that can happen with the transplant. So we pioneered uh, a so-called non ablative regimen, reduced intensity regimens uh, in, in the in southern year 2000, uh, and that has worked very well, working very well, is allowing all the patients to get a transplant. Also, there is a new therapy to prevent graphosis Some therapies that are pioneered by uh, investigator John Hopkins using post-transplant cyclophosphate, for instance. And that has lessened the risk of graphosis especially the chronic one. Obviously, there is supportive care is better. So, uh, and uh, the treatment-related mortality has decreased substantially. So for all these reasons together, we believe that allogenic transplantation is still the best treatment for patients. Now, in modern era, with a novel biological agents that's coming up, those biological agents appear to be active, but that activity is not long-lasting. Uh, especially uh, the new generations of, uh, I'll give you an example, new generation BTK inhibitor, or even CAR T cell. So, the, so it is important to use those agents, if possible, in combination with transplant. Let's say, identify patients who are not responding well to therapy, have refractory disease, try to use those combinations or treatments and try to bridge them to transplant. That will make the transplant safer. Because if we use those agents by itself, I'll give you the CAR T cell, there is, uh, the, the long-term outcome is not so good. Only a pro small proportion of patients have long-term remission, and this is questionable because questionable based on the, uh, on the amount of disease that patients have had. Also, we're learning more about CAR T cell, for instance. There is some data on secondary cancer of the CAR T cell, where the T cell malignancies or myeloid malignancies. There are some patients who develop ablation of their, or their counts after the CAR T cell, and they will not be able to receive any other therapies. And, and patients who have high bulky disease do poorly with CAR T cells. So CAR T cells and other agents are important in debulking. Ideally, we should identify the biological feature of each patient. If patients have high risk features, prepare for CAR T cell or other things, but at the same time prepare for transplant to move forward to transplant after those agents right away. So where disease is still low. So this is why I believe in 2024, allergen transplantation is the preferred treatment of choice for patients with Richter.